Birchwood race wasn't for a championship, but it set the tone for the year. Alderbridge and Birchwood were the most competitive schools in the region. Rumor was scouts were coming to evaluate rowers for international competitions. Captain was apparently being looked at for the Olympic trials. So we were hours away from our race against Birchwood and the start of our season against our biggest rivals. But still, Dawn hadn't been exaggerating when she suggested the team seemed to handicap itself by partying late into the night before races. And the insanity of Captain's command for me to cut Ron's blisters wasn't lost on me then, but still, I just made the Varsity 8, and it finally seemed like I was succeeding on the crew team when Captain beckoned me to join him next to Ron for the surgery. Thanks for joining us, fail son. Now this will be a quick procedure, okay? Nothing to worry about. We'll be in and out of Ron's blisters even faster than your little pecker losing its virginity and pride. <laughs> <laughs> Shouldn't I wash my hands? Sure, sure, wash them. With this fucking handle. <laughs> and some for the chef. I thought you wanted him sober, Henry. Oh, 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 oh. Donny Don. Do I contradict myself? Very well, then. I contradict myself. I am large, expansive. I contain multitudes. Drop the shit. You want a drunk freshman cutting into the hands of our force? I want our new members of the Varsity 8 obeying their captain. I want my recently reinstated Cox on the same page as me. Just walk away, Ron. We'll take you to the health center. No. You heard him, Don. He's happy with his doctors. No need to switch under our medical plan now. Fuck you guys and your juvenile games. I'm out. Don't leave, Don. Come on, I thought you're pre-med. Don't you want to see real anatomy in action? (laughs) Fucking prude. (laughs) Once Don left, Captain practically shoved the handle into my mouth. I had too much to lose, saying no. My tuition to Alderbridge, my place in the Varsity 8. I took down nearly half the bottle, and afterwards, the team cheered. Captain even gave me a hug. Ron stood next to us, watching. Then, Captain produced the dop kit, out of which he removed his tools. A scalpel, scissors, and a lighter. All joking aside, we want to make sure our instruments are sterile, okay? Now run the scalpel under the fire grip. Mmm, good. Now let's start with his right hand. I see some juicy suckers on that one. Ron, space your fingers out wide. You see that pus sack on the middle finger? Run the blade under the base. A little blood is normal. Come on, don't mind them, Greggy. Keep going. You all right, Ron? He's fine. Only one more to go. This one's on the digits, so it's a little tougher. Everyone, now's your chance to participate. Shine your phone lights. Let's help Greg see what he's doing. I tried to block out the distractions and focus on the last small blister on Ron's left hand, in the middle of his pointer finger. I angled the blade down, as I did for the rest of the blisters, but as I got to the base, I slipped. Captain insisted we didn't take Ron to the health center. He didn't want to raise suspicions around the team. Despite Ron assuring him he wouldn't rat us out, Captain said it was for the best if he just finished off the job and we all got some sleep before the big race. I didn't object. I was too freaked out. I went back to the dorm, drunk and alone. And at some point later in the night, I heard the door open and Ron slink into his bed. I resisted the urge to say something, too guilty about what I'd done. I figured at this point, he would do what was best, skip the race and get some sleep. Oh, fuck. My head. Ron, you're up. I'm getting ready. You're not actually rowing, are you? Why wouldn't I? Dude, you look awful. You're pale and sweaty. Did you even sleep? 
let me feel your head. What the fuck are you doing? You're burning up, dude. You can't row today. Let me see your hands. No fucking way! I don't want you anywhere near my hands. Okay, but after last night, I really don't think you should row. Well, that's not for you to decide. Captain said it'd be fine. He's not here right now. I'm fine. Okay? Just need a shower and some mat. But... Ron, come on. You don't need to do this. You don't get it! No, man, I get it. I worked hard, too. I was really pumped for us to race in the Varsity 8 today. I, I want to win. It's what we worked for. No, Greg! You don't get it! It all comes so fucking easy for you! Your dad's name is on the fucking boathouse! I have to work so fucking hard to be accepted. What are you talking about? Captain hates me. Yeah, but you still belong. Captain gets that. Captain accepts it. Even if he's a dick about it. Sure, but we both worked for this. It's just, you can't go out there like this. You don't look good. What, you're gonna swoop in like yesterday and be the hero? Save the day? You're just like your dad. What would you know about that? Captain told me what he did. What? You really don't know. Wow. Idiot. What? He got someone killed, Greg. You're fucking with me. Nope. It was a guy in his boat. It happened right after the New England Championships. Bullshit. Ask him. It was ruled a drowning, but the timing and the details seems pretty shady. Plus the boathouse? Seems like your family tried to pay off the school. Rewrite some history. You're full of shit. If you want to race and fucking puke on the water and rip open your hands, go ahead. That way Captain will see how weak you are. I was looking out for you, but fuck it. Go ahead and dig your own grave. Glad to know your true feelings. See you at the boathouse. I did call my dad while Ron was in the shower. He didn't pick up, but I left a message. I also mentioned I made the Varsity 8 and was about to row against Birchwood, but fuck. Why didn't he told me about rowing at Alderbridge? I threw on my unisuit and jogged to the boathouse. It was still relatively early in the fall, though the New England chill was starting to set in. My dad said his biggest regret was missing a shot at qualifying for the Olympics. Was it because of what he did? I didn't know then, and I don't know now. You're early. I ran over. I thought I'd warm up. How much later did you stay at the party? Not that long. How's Ron? He's... healing. He didn't have to let that happen. How do you say no to Captain? You just do, Greg. I know he's a leader of this team, and I know how good it feels when you have his favor, but some of his shit you just have to say no to. Be your own person and do what you know is right. Like you did? Let's go, Greg. Help me get out the oars. The team started to trickle in, save for Ron. Captain looked no worse for the night before. He made the rounds, slapping backs and saying motivating words. When Ron came into the boat dock, he walked in sheepishly, almost like he was apologizing. I kept staring at Ron, trying to gauge whether he could pull this off. Don looked over to me as if the night before was revealed from his expressions. Let me see your hands, Ron. No. I'm the cox of the Varsity 8. It's my job to know what's going on in the boat. Let me see your hands. I can row. I'll be the judge. Let me see them. You absolutely cannot row. Those blisters are infected. Look at that one on your left hand. You need antibiotics. I'll do it after the race. I'm fine. I talk to Captain. I'll talk to Captain. Henry. You cannot let Ron row. His hands are infected. He needs medical attention. Relax, Don. He and I talked about it. He's going to grit it out today, then go to his doctor at home during fall break, okay? It's fine. It is not fine. If you let Ron row, I'm quitting the team right now. You overestimate your importance, Don. You're a cox. You don't row in the boats. You sit in the back of the boat with your little intercom and steering wires and act important. But when it comes down to it... You're an interchangeable part. Leave. And if you say a fucking word to anyone, I'll let your daddy know about your little lesbian shit. Get the fuck out of here. You're the fucking devil. Boo-hoo! You're an interchangeable part. You're better than this, Greg. Do not end up like him. 
row this race, fine. But protect the good parts of you. Where are you going? Captain played off the whole thing like it was no big deal. He told us Dawn was on her period or something, and that's why she left, which most of the guys laughed at. I was starting to understand just how serious things were. I often wonder now what I could have done. Taken Ron to the hospital, told on Captain. What would have stopped us from hitting that rock bottom? But then I think it's not how life works. You don't get replays. It's not like sports. It's not a game. The memory I have of that novice season at Alderbridge is incomplete, but it's crystallized in moments of clarity at points where I was most low. As we got ready in the Varsity 8, I can picture it like a movie. Grabbing my portside oar, lowering into my three-seat, adjusting the foot stretchers, locking the oar into place, then staring at the blank canvas of Ron's back. I clapped him on the shoulder. Some small gesture to show him I was there. He made no acknowledgement. As the novice cocks jumped into our boat, and we took it out, rowing up to the start. Ready up? Nice and easy. Let's line up those bow balls. One seat. Give me a light stroke. Good. Keep your eyes in the boat. Steady. We're almost aligned. Captain informs me we're doing a quick start. Half stroke, half stroke, quarter stroke, full. Then we'll transition into a race tempo. Work for us novices, work for you. Up command. On the gun, we'll start. Get ready. The race was 2,000 meters. Just like on the Earth, we nailed the start. Jolting the boat forward and then locked into our opening pace. Captain, in the stroke, kept us moving briskly yet deliberately. If it was me in that stroke seat, I would have brought up the rating. But it seemed Captain wanted our technique, our togetherness showcase, before we dipped into our reserves of energy. I took some quick peeks over the side of the boat at the start and saw we were in parallel with Birchwood. No boat had the early advantage, save for our pace, which was a beat slower than theirs. Looking good, looking strong. The boat's moving nicely. Let's add in a little power sense, see if we can create some distance. Two. One. Power 10! As I added more power to my strokes, I could feel our collective strength. Ron, in front of me, rode with his usual perfect form. I tried to follow him exactly, and I transformed myself into a flawless copy, like I imagine each of us doing, making us one unified whole. And 10! Good! We've got about half a boat length on them. Let's open it up. We're moving into the middle of the course. We know it gets a little bendy. A little choppy. I'll try to keep close, but out of the way. We're at a good pace. Stay strong. All I could see was the back of Ron, his neck and his shoulders, which flexed with each successive movement. But as we got into the middle of the race, he was falling over. We were losing our collective balance, shifting side to side. Dude, are you okay? Shut up! No talking in the boat! Fucking balance this thing! Let's go for another pair of ten. Bring in some strength. And two... One. Power that our coxswain thought would even us out only hastened the deterioration of Ron's rowing. We were past the halfway point, Mount Moriah looming above. I wondered how much longer could Ron hold it together. Then I felt myself dip too far into the catch, my blade submerged into the water. What the fuck? Did someone catch a crab? Three feet ahead of scare, but he's back now. We lost some ground, Captain. Bring up the rating. I'd been focusing so hard on Ron that I hadn't attended to my own rowing. I'd almost ruined the entire race. But with the rating increasing, I put all my energy into quick, hard strokes. This part of the race was where I would give my best to the boat. I would row beyond exhaustion. Then I saw Ron collapse into a seat. Richie, what are you doing? I think he passed out. Ron! What the fuck? What the fuck? Wake him up! Wake him the fuck up! Ron! Ron was hunched over with the oar handle gliding in his lap. We were nearing the last 200 meters with the boathouse in sight. I'd remembered something that was said to me early in my training. If you can't row in the middle of a race, you should get out of the boat, and the other person in your pair should jump out too to balance the boat, remove the dead weight. So I acted on 
some small hope that we could still win. What the fuck is going on? They're gaining on us! Come on, Ron. If you can hear me, we're gonna jump out, okay? Towards the shore. I got you, guys. Ready? I grabbed hold of Ron, pushing him to the surface. He wasn't answering me. His eyes were closed. And I could see Dawn on the banks of the Conroy. Greg! Ron! I'm calling an ambulance! Ron! 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 Ron!